Welcome back to the Fan Morning Show. I'm Ron Cook in for the guys. Greg Giannotti, Paul Alexander of the day off. Jim Colony is with me. We're going to get back to some hockey talk, and I can think of no one better to talk hockey with than our next guest, the former Penguins coach, and a guy I believe is going to coach again in the NHL real soon. I'm talking about former Penguins coach Michael Terry. And hey, Michael, how are you this morning, man? Pretty good, thank you. How about you guys? We're doing great. We're doing great. Good, we got good. a big game coming up here this Saturday. You might have heard something about it. <laughs> For sure, there's going to be it's going to be a great game. A great game, a fun game. Uh, not only for uh, the fans, it's going to be fun, but it's, I think it's going to be fun for the players. It's going to be fun for the family of the players, the management. So uh, I've been there, and I had a lot of fun to, to coach that game. Mike, I know you coached the Winter Classic in 2008 in Buffalo. Uh, it was perfect conditions, the snow. It was just fabulous. It ended the way it was supposed to. Sidney Crosby winning in, in a shootout. Just talk about what that whole thing was like and what you remember about it. Well, the thing that I remember, uh, it started the day before because uh, we were stuck on the plane, and, uh, and and for us, there was no way we were going to have to miss that practice. So uh, yeah, I was even thinking for a while that uh, we're going to have to uh, to drive to Buffalo. We, mm-hmm. really didn't, we didn't want to miss that practice before to, uh, to play that game. So uh, eventually, they fixed the plane, and uh, we were capable to go out there. And uh, having that practice, having that practice was a lot of fun, guys. You know, it's like uh, you could see the eyes in the players, to see the, the stadium. Uh, guys got a lot of fun on the ice. Uh, there, some of their family was there. Uh, Mario was there for the practice. You know, it's like it was, this is where it started. Because when it was game day, uh, there was a lot of excitement about the game. Uh, but uh, the one thing for sure, you want to make sure uh, you want to have a good souvenir. And you want to have a great souvenir about that day. And the only way to have a great souvenir is to win the hockey game. So guy was pretty focused. Mike, did you have any idea what going into this thing that the Winter Classic would become as, as big as it has so quickly? Um, yeah, I was kind of surprised because, first of all, that was the first time. Uh, you, you hear a lot of things that is going to happen. You hear that the, the, the ticket was going to be sold out. Uh, you, when you're there, when you're listening uh, the anthem, when you see the Army plane get out of there after the anthem, they say, wow, it's almost, it's almost like the Super Bowl. And uh, you could see the uh, the excitement in the players and the eyes, and they were pretty nervous about it. Both teams was nervous about it, and I think the NHL did a great job. And uh, this is a great tradition, and hopefully this year uh, we will get the weather on our side because that should be another exciting game with the Capitals. We're talking to Penguins coach Michael, former Penguins coach Michael Terrian here on Sports Radio 93.7 The Fan. Mike, it was only appropriate that Sydney ended that game with the goal in the shootout, isn't it? <laughs> when we end up, you know, at the end it was pretty tight. And uh, uh, if you guys remember, um, in the third period we have to switch side because of the wind. And to the, so the NHL official told us before the game it's a windy day, and, and to make sure that the both team will have a fair chance to win the hockey game. So in the third period we have to switch side. And I remember talking to my team. You know, this this is great. And people were singing, and we were doing at the time that uh, some uh, some some of the staff was uh, trying to clean the ice because it was a snowy day, and uh, he ended up in overtime. And uh, Cinderella story almost, you know, when you I saw Cindy get the puck, I got the feeling, you know, and he's a, he's the type of guy that like like to live those moments and end up winning the goal, uh, scoring the goal, and get the win for us. It's like that was almost like a perfect scenario. You know, Michelle. Speaking of uh, speaking of Sidney Crosby, uh, you, know, you know, a scout for for Minnesota. So I've I've, had, I've run into you almost literally in in the press box a couple times. Uh, but what do you make of of what he's doing? One of the great quotes that I I've heard recently was when Bill Guerin was here uh, to announce his retirement, and he just the way he put it was he said it's like he's he's making an assault on the game. Uh, the way that Crosby has played, the way he's elevated his game, he's got four points again last night. How can you describe what you've seen from him over the last month and a half? Well, you know, and, 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 and one thing we have to realize, uh, he's going to get better again. 
You know, this is not the top of Cindy Crosby, I believe. Even he's dominating the league. He's still young. He's still going to learn. I wait in about three, four years about the way, the way that that guy is always going to play that game. For me, you know, he's still going to get better. Uh, I coached that team, that kid, for uh, three years, and he wants to learn. He wants to learn about the game. And right now, the game seems slow for him. You know, he's on another level. Everything is capable to do. He's run. I saw him playing junior. He was dominated in junior. He was so fast comparing to uh, other players on the ice. And it's almost like everything that you see that he was playing junior, the way that he's playing in the NHL right now. And uh, I always trust that kid about his maturity. I always trust that kid about his desire to be the best player on the world. And um, I think this, just, this is just the start. And uh, this is, uh, if I'm surprised, no, I'm not surprised the way that he's handled himself on the ice. We're talking to former Penguins coach Michael Terrian here on Sports Radio 93.7 The Fan. Mike, you saw something in him probably earlier than anybody else did. You made him a captain early on at a very young age. He became the youngest captain, I think, in NHL history under you. Everybody sees what he does on the ice. Can you talk a little bit about what he is like in that locker room? Well, he's, first of all, he leads by example. I don't think, uh, and even when we we decide to name Sidden as a captain, I even asked him the year before, and uh, he, he refused because uh, he, was, he was saying that he was not ready for that challenge at 18 years old. And the reason why that I believe that after I always believe for the Pittsburgh Penguins, uh, after Mario Lemieux, there was no way there's going to be somebody else than, than, than Cindy Crosby. I was waiting as a coach to uh, to wait a year or two and make sure that uh, when he'll get the seat, he'll be ready. And I told him I'm going to be there to support you. I'm not expecting you at, at 19 years old to be uh, the greatest captain, you know, and uh, I'm going to be there to support and we're going to work together with uh, with that leadership. But he's a guy who leads by example. During practice, he leads by example. During games, off the ice, the way he's committed to the game, the way he's committed physically. Um, that's why, and that's why that uh, even if I had that night, I remember I got, some people was criticize me at the time, uh, letting me know that uh, in the media that he was too young, to this is way too much pressure for him. But he was so much, he was so mature, you know. I think he was ready for that challenge, and that was all part of a kind of plan uh, for him to be the player that he he was he is right now. Now, Mike, what about what you see from from your former team, from 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 Sid's team now? Uh, is it is it possible for a team to be playing at the level that the Penguins are playing at here mid season, and to be even be able to take that to a higher level when they're going to have to here in a few months in the playoffs? I think they're going to be able to get to another step. Uh, after the trailing deadline, um, I like the way, uh, uh, obviously, I like the way uh, Sydney's line is playing. They, they dominate the game uh, right now. Uh, I think there's a great, great chemistry with the crew uh, when they're together uh, on the ice. First of all, Sid likes to play with him. He, he's a little warrior. He's a create a lot of space for him. Uh, I like the way that uh, the defense handled himself. I think this is probably the best defensive squad on the East. But Mark Andre Fleury really, really picked it up uh, after the first month. So uh, uh, I like I like the, the Penguin chance again this year. Former Penguins coach Michael Terry, and we're down to the last few seconds here. Uh, the Penguins and Capitals in the NHL, as far as rivalry goes, it doesn't get any better than that, does it? For They they picked two great teams to put in the uh, Winter Classic, didn't they? Oh, for sure, for sure, for sure. There's always, you know, there's always a rivalry with the Capitals and players on both sides. I think they're excited. They want to prove... Uh, on the pit on the Pittsburgh side, uh, who's the best? And I'm sure it's the same thing with uh, with Washington. So uh, this is going to be a pretty exciting game. Mike, what do you make of the? Uh, have you watched any of the HBO series 24/7? What do you make of it? And would you have liked to have been the subject of something like that with all access behind the scenes right, when you were a coach? <laughs> I saw the first one only. Uh, I've been traveling right now in Canada. I haven't the second one for sure. We will be watching the rest of the series when I get back home. Um, but you know what? That's just to show. You know, when things going well for a team, you know, guys having fun, 
Uh, they're pretty loose. They're still working hard. And on the end, I remember that uh, I'm talking about the first uh, episode. Uh, it was pretty tense on the on, on Washington, and it's normal because guys are there. Guys are got a lot of pride, and guys wants to win. You know, so it's not fun about losing. And only going on a streak like that with the capital was at that time. Uh, they didn't have a lot of fun, and uh, they get out of it. I think last, I think they, they got a win in their last four games, and I'm sure you're going to see uh, a different atmosphere in the dressing room and around the team because you know basically you got to win. So, uh, but I think HBO did a great job. I think it's good for the NHL and it's good for both teams. Now, you would never talk like Capitals coach Bruce Boudreau, <laughs> would you? Ah, oh, come on, Ron. Never. <laughs> <laughs> I know better. I know you better than that, Mike. Hey, listen, I, I appreciate you taking time today. I know you're you're scouting for the Minnesota club, and uh, I can't wait till the day comes when you're back coaching in the N- NHL, and I know it's going to happen soon. Thanks for taking the time. Thank you for the time, guys. All Let's right. See One of my favorite guys of all time, Mike Terry. You know what he, you know what he, he doesn't get the credit he deserves for turning this team around. I don't think they win the Cup in, in, in 09 without him.